as you can see, it is now several hours later. What happened is I got about three-fourths of the way through recording this one, and the computer crashed. And so then I started helping Dad make dinner and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, we had curry. It was nice. Anyway, though, I'm sure you're all wondering, wait a minute, Blackjack, this, uh, who could this possibly be? A Pokemon character versus one of the most popular comic book characters? Who in the world could it be? Well, let's just get right into it. I have wasted enough time with my rambling, and goodness knows I'm going to continue doing so. So, this... A character who needs no introduction. Harley Quinn is cunning, swift, and intelligent. Yes, she is intelligent. That is something that a lot of people forget about her. She did get a PhD, and yes, I know, she quote-unquote didn't want to get it by studying in Alfred's words, but, or, no, it wasn't Alfred. I don't know. Whoever was talking was off-screen. But, uh, or off focus. Anyway, there was like one time. And Harley has shown herself to be quite capable in the upstairs department. Just, she's not all there. She is kind of removed from reality. Let's, she has been shown to be incapable of telling if someone is injured or not, because in her own little Harley vision, they could be perfectly fine. Her Harley vision takes the form of a cartoon. It literally looks like the animated series. And I don't know if that's actually the formal name for it. It's just when she's seeing a henchman bleeding from a stomach wound, she tells him to get up because she thinks he's being a drama queen because she literally does not see the wound. So yes, she is extremely intelligent, but... That gets in the way. She has no formal fighting training. However, she adapts to weapons quite easily, as we have seen with not only that uh, thing there, the giant hammer, she's also got her punch gun, or whatever you call that. I don't know if either that or the bang flag thing have formal names. And here she is with a regular gun. Although it's an enormous one, but yeah. <laughs> uh, she has... Uh, she's a former gymnast, as everyone probably remembers. And I'm not sure exactly like what kind of level she was on. During my previous recording, I said Olympic level, but that might not have been the case. However, she was very, very good and won awards for it. So she's an award-winning gymnast. I'm putting that in quotation marks because I don't know how high that got her. But now she has superhuman flexibility and gymnastic skills because of some sort of injection poison Ivy gave her, which also makes her immune to poison. I'm just gonna um, do this little gesture that Batgirl did. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say on that subject. <laughs> Harley is... Uh, come on. An emotional character. Easily uh, led astray by people she likes, such as Joker and Poison Ivy. But uh, she does... Learn to put the past behind her at some point, because in Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, when it showed that she had fallen off that cliff, which she does have a tendency to get thrown off of high places, she fell off a cliff and Barbara, the future police chief, is telling Terry, oh, we never saw her after that, or like... It was something along those lines. And then near the end of the movie, we find out, oh yeah, she's now a little old lady and she was raising these two girls who may or may not be her biological grandkids. All the, well, no, they couldn't be because that's the entire reason. I, mean, I don't know that she did have a kid in another continuity, so you never know. 
You never know what they pulled out of their butts. Anyway, so that means that she did something pretty incredible there. She outwitted the world's greatest detective for 50 years. Harley Quinn was believed dead by Batman and Batgirl for 50 years. It is possible, I am willing to admit, that Batman might have known that she survived and just didn't say anything, and thus Batgirl wouldn't have found out. But I don't know. I tend to go in that case with more of what the narrative said. Especially because by this point, Barbara was chief of police, and Bruce probably would have said, oh, by the way... Uh, Harley has fought uh, Mercy Graves, a Lex Luthor's bodyguard, who's also a professional hit woman, to a near standstill. It's unknown how long either would have lasted had the fighting kept up. Uh, once Mercy was summoned to another room by Lex, Harley almost immediately fainted. However, she was made, able to make it over to where Joker was. Uh, it's unknown if she was just letting herself do that because the fight was over or if she could have kept pushing herself or what. But the very fact that someone who was not trained in the fighting arts could go toe to toe with someone like Mercy Graves without using the, you know, the hammer or the bang, the bang gun or anything like that. This has got uh, quite, it's, you know, quite a feat there. And, of course, possibly her most impressive feat that she has under her belt, Harley has twice come this close to figuring out the biggest secret in all of Gotham, Batman's identity. First was in the animated series when she ran into Bruce Wayne and commented about how his chin looked familiar. And the other time was in the main series comics where she was crashing a party again at Wayne Manor and her there wasn't anything he could do about it because it was a jester theme. <laughs> party and you should have known that would have invited trouble her henchman asked her why do you like this guy so much he's just an airhead she's like I don't know he's got a presence I've only ever met two other people like it who have that presence Mr. J and Batman it's like Harley Okay, just think about nothing but that for a couple of minutes, okay? Just think about it. Think about his chin. Think about his voice. You can figure it out, right? Right? <laughs> However, she, as I stated before, is uh, easily distracted. Her delusions can distract her from reality and mean that she literally does not see the same things other people do. I would imagine the closest thing to this would be um, Pyro from Team Fortress 2, where Pyro thinks that everything is just sunshine and lollipops and rainbows. <laughs> Harley would start singing, so I can too. Whereas, you know, meanwhile, it's flaming death all around. And that, that, that is Harley. So that, I think, is her biggest weakness, is the fact that she... I mean, there are a lot of insane characters. Batman, for instance. You know, it's not necessarily a detriment, but in Harley's case, it is. Her bad life choices as far as who she loves, that, that wouldn't play into a death battle. Although it does show that she's not exactly the best judge of character, despite being, you know, a very smart person and a psychiatric doctor. 
Hmm. So, yeah, th those are her biggest weaknesses. However, as I said, she is smarter than people tend to think, including in-universe. Uh, people have dismissed her as, you know, bubble-headed blonde bimbo. You know, she's... <laughs> she's... Apparently, she's... None of those things. Not even blonde. <laughs> so... Who exactly would I be putting her up against? Who could possibly top this juggernaut of flexibility force? Oh, goodness. I gotta rephrase that. What a... This paragon of psychology? I don't know. I was gonna go with the da da of duh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Queen of crime? I'll just... There. Okay, who could possibly be another underestimated gymnast, criminal, etc., all of that cool stuff? Well, remember how I said last time that it was a Pokemon character? I speak of none other than Domino the Black Tulip, also known as Agent 009, which may mean that she has a license to kill. And honestly, she probably has. Because despite that cute, cute face, there we see her being especially adorable. And uh, here we see her stating that she shows no mercy at all. She heavily implies that she could kill those Pokemon right in front of her. And you know those two are no slouches right there. I mean, they're both weak to water. But her element is electricity. Something ground types are immune to. And you may think that that is completely ridiculous, but I remind you that in Generations, that one rocket agent with the rod, he used an electrified rod to kill Marowak, who is a ground type. It's likely, I don't know if it's 100%, not in Generations, in Origins. It's likely, I would consider it fairly likely, that they based that weapon on Domino's tulip itself. The, what looks like an ordinary flower, despite her having a whole bunch of them, is, in fact, her secret weapon. Here we see it extends into a rod. She can also use it as a throwing dart, wherein she pulls out several of them at once. And it is electrified as well. She can take down a considerable amount with that damn thing. And unlike pretty much every other character we have ever seen in the entire series. There is something kind of unique about Domino, and that is the fact that despite her high rank in Team Rocket, the fact that she basically... Uh, the fact that she has this close relationship with the boss himself to the point where she's running missions directly under him, she has no known Pokemon. She doesn't use them, and she doesn't need them. She does all of her fighting on her own, and even the incredibly capable characters we've seen, I mean, such as Giovanni himself, I mean, look at that. He's probably a good the four times her body mass, and if we go by um, the height chart that someone came up with for... Uh, uh, Ultra Sun and Moon, the man is like five foot six. He's pure muscle. And yeah, he uses Pokemon. He's never been shown to be in a physical altercation. And Domino, on the other hand, who's this little wisp of a thing, looks, you know, <laughs> looks like she should be putting her makeup on in the school bathroom. <laughs> she has no need for them. And going back to, huh, I keep trying to click on the pictures to make them open in here. Going 
back to this. Remember how we talked about people underestimating her? Well, I mean, let's be honest. Look at that face. Would you expect someone like that to be a ruthless killer? Of course not. But would you expect them to be working at this supposedly prestigious institution? Uh, institute called the Pokemon Institute because nobody in this series has any idea how to name anything. <laughs> we don't know much about the Pokemon Institute, but it's treated as though this is an enormously prestigious honor to so much as work there. So she did say that Team Rocket has eyes everywhere. And of course, the friendliest face can hide the deadliest foe. Uh, it is possible that she was, in fact, undercover there. We don't know for a fact that she was. She could have just joined up with him shortly before this. But it's treated as though it's at least plausible that she was. She, uh, and I really wish that I had this gift. I didn't, um... Uh, I didn't think to take a screen cap of it. Um, there she dodges a boulder with only about a second or two warning. She leaps out of the way, probably a good uh, three times her own height, which in and of itself is not a spectacular feat in this series, but her quick reflexes are. And she kind of brushes it off when people are like, wait a minute, did you just... She's like... Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> she has a quick temper, takes it out on those around her, including, um, well, Jesse, James, and Meowth. She yells at them after Giovanni yells at her. Which actually causes her downfall. Because she had a very, very strange weakness for someone as flexible as her. As a, who is able to take on foes like Scyther flat on with her tulip rod, which, bear in mind, Scyther can break like pretty much anything with its claw, its sickles. She just goes up against it like this. And so what happens? She goes through those acrobatic displays, fighting everything in her path. And what stops her? Slipping on the wet floor that she had just told them to clean. This is where you put in the sarcastic trombone music. She ends up with her head in the bucket of cleaning supplies. <laughs> but, you know, at least... At least... She doesn't remember it now. So she has spared the humiliation because at the end of the movie, uh, Mewtwo wiped her memory anyway. It's supposed to be our secret. To be secret, our army is way too far out in the open. No duh. <laughs> she does, however, approach her position with the boss rather fearlessly. Also, she seems to have gotten at least a foot taller since that last screenshot of the two of them. <laughs> but yes. Domino... Uh, has, I would say, fewer weaknesses, but more common ones. Wet floors. You know, Domino, you've got to have traction on the bottom of those boots. She ends up with her head in a bucket and the Iron Mask Marauder ends up with his head out of one. <laughs> now, her only real tool here is basically the tulips. But, considering they, like her are kind of underestimated. I mean, come on, if your opponent was a gymnast holding a flower, what would you be thinking? And then they started throwing them and they were sharp. So they're basically darts, they're electric weapons, and it can extend into a rod. I don't remember if it can electrocute as a rod, but it does as the dart, so yeah. Anyway, I think this would be an interesting matchup. I think they would be pretty easily, uh, evenly matched. They both, uh, pardon me, curry. 